everyone, it's Shell from Art Journalist, and today I am going to walk you through turning this old book into a journal um, using my elusive perfect no sew binding method. And I'm going to go through step by step everything I do to take this book and turn it into a beautiful, artsy, junky, whatever randomness I put in it journal. So the first thing you need to get started is just any old book that you want to use. Um, this one I got from a thrift store and the reason I got it is not because of the dust jacket but because of the cover. It's just this really pretty speckled black and gold cover I really liked. And the only thing you really have to think about is what size you want your journal to be. Um, the wider the spine, the more papers you can fit in there. And I like to make sure my journals are at least like about nine inches tall by six inches wide. That way if I have a lot of like eight and a half by 11 inch papers, I can just fold them in half and they're gonna fit nicely in here. So that's what the book is that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna show you how to tear this apart. There's a lot of ways that you can tear a book apart, um, but I've found that the best way for me is to use a box knife cutter. And the first thing I do is I kind of break up the binding a little bit. And I just go like this and pull on it. And that just kind of loosens it up a little bit because we want to keep the spine intact but we want to get rid of this part, which is called the text block. So I'm just going to pull on that. And that just loosens it up a little, just makes it a lot easier for cutting. And you can see I'm already getting it to fall apart, so that's awesome. So I'm going to rip out this part. And don't be afraid, like if you cut it to the point where this paper rips off, that is not a problem. This is like a newer book that has the glued binding, so it's going to be a little bit harder to take apart, but it's not going to be impossible. Then I'm going to come over to the other side here. And I'm just going to, again, rip that off. Try to get that to come down. And I always use a box letter when I'm, I always stand up when I use one just because it gives me more control over the knife. And so I'm just going to cut here. And you don't want to try to do this too fast. Um, and if you have to score it a bunch of times, that's okay. You do want to kind of be careful that you don't go through the entire book cover, but if you do, it's not a big deal. It's nothing we can't fix with a little bit of tape. And you need a little bit of muscle for this part. And you just rip it right out. So there we have all of the papers, the text block. We can save that to use papers as in our journal. And we have our spine here. Okay, so we have our book cover. I did pretty good, I didn't cut through it. If you did cut through this part by accident, just put some tape over it, it will be fine. Um, and so the next part we're gonna do is reinforce this spine because we're gonna be putting rubber bands around the spine and I want this to have a little more structure. So I cut out a piece of thin cardboard. This is like cereal box weight. And I'm just gonna make sure it's gonna fit there and it will. And I'm gonna grab some tacky glue. You can use PVA glue, um, whatever kind of glue you have handy. And I'm going to go very liberally with this glue because I want it to stick. And I'm going to put that down there. And don't worry about what this looks like because we're all going to be covering this part all up. And I'm just going to let that um, kind of 
set and dry. You don't necessarily have to wait for it to dry though. Um, just depends if you mind having glue all over your fingers and hands. Um, for the next part, we're going to want to cover this up with something that looks better than the cardboard. And a lot of times, whatever's on the spine is not really what I want on my journal. The nice thing about a cover like this, I don't have to worry about which side is up or down because it's basically the same in both directions. But if you're doing this on a, like, book that has, like, a different cover, you may want to make sure that you're always working right side up. And for this part, you can use one of two options. One option is three inch wide book binding tape. It works very nicely. It's like a cloth tape. Um, it just goes on real easily. You don't have to fuss with glue, but you do have to fuss with tape. Um, I'm somewhat tape challenged, but I like this tape a lot. And another option you can do, like I did in this book cover that I haven't made into a journal yet, is you can actually use a piece of fabric. So this is a piece of denim. I have um, some of this fabric that I got, I think Walmart a couple years ago. It's like kind of like an upholstery, fake leathery fabric that's kind of cool. So it's really just a matter of personal pe preference. Any kind of fabric would work. I do recommend like a heavier weight, like something like denim or upholstery fabric. Or you can use the cloth book binding tape. Um, I think I'm probably gonna use the cloth book binding tape, although that is kind of pretty, isn't it? Hmm, I'm gonna stick with the cloth book binding tape. Just because I really wanna get making this journal and I don't want to wait for my glue to dry. So for this step with the tape, um, I am a little bit tape challenged. I'm not going to lie there. So if you have a hard time using tape, hopefully this might give you some inspiration. So the nice thing about this tape, because it's so thick, it does lay nice and flat. Put that down like that and we want when we put this on to fold it over we want that folded part in the inside of the book so i'm just gonna kind of center this up here doesn't have to be perfect and i'm gonna lay that down and make sure it's like nice and flat because it'll sometimes try to curve up I'm going to bring this side of the tape up nice and tight. If you have a couple of wrinkles, don't panic. You can usually smooth them out pretty easily. And of course you can always cover it up with tape or paper later. And then we're going to bring it over to overlap. And then I have found this tape is hard to cut with scissors. It actually comes off much easier if you just rip it. So there we go. We now have a beautiful finished book cover and you can feel like it's nice and nice and sturdy. If you wanted to use the fabric like I showed you, you would just do the same thing. You would take your fabric and put it in the middle, you know, trim it so that it fits. This is a lot longer than it needs to be. But you would just trim it like about right there and then you would glue it on. So you could use something like tacky glue, PVA glue, something like that. So those are some of your options to reinforce the spine. So now we are ready for the next fun part, which is picking all of our papers to go inside this journal. Okay, so in this little container, I have all of my different papers that I want to use for making journal pages. So some of this is like thick cardboard type of paper. I have envelopes. I love these ones that my husband gets. They're really nice. They have like different decorations on them. So some junk mail, some envelopes, and mail. This is a book I got at the thrift store that has like cashier paper. I know I want to put this in my journal, so I'm just going to rip off maybe one or two sheets of that. And 
this is a book um, that was my daughter's for homework, which I think is perfect. So I'm just going to pick out some random pages in here. like memo pads, note cards, that kind of thing. I like these. Pick one of those. And right now I'm just randomly going through this whole pile and saying like, you know, what what would be cool? A lot of these are holiday themed. I'm gonna get all this holiday stuff out of there because I'm not making a Christmas journal. I have some greeting cards. This one's kind of pretty. And I, again, I'm just going through whatever I have. Envelopes are fun. Kind of like that one. I think it goes with our card. That's another envelope. I don't think I want to use that for this. I have some doodle paper. Math. So that's all good to use for the junk journal. Some old art that I just didn't end up doing anything with. So that's all gonna go in this is like heavier packaging paper I think this probably came with scrapbook paper or something like that so these are all good these are on nice thick cardstock so I'm just gonna take a bunch of that junk these I think are from some jelly plate prints so those are always fun to use. I have a bunch of those. Um, pick out some of those. And I don't worry about whether these are pretty or whatever the colors. I'm just picking out whatever. Um, because you can always cover it up with paint. There's a little pencil sketch. So these are good to use. Let's see what else we got in here. That one definitely looks like junk to me. Let's see. These are some of my marbled papers. I have a video on how I marbled these. Um, and I have to make one that's more detailed eventually. These are pretty. I want to put one of these in there. I have some old book papers, so that'll work good. Magazine page. Some dictionary papers. So I collect paper and I get all kinds of stuff. Sometimes I order it through the mail. Um, there's tons of shops that sell like ephemeral lots and things. So it's just up to your own personal preference. This is some sheet music I think I'm going to use. Let's see here. Got like some construction paper. That's kind of cool. That's pretty much everything in that box. Okay, so I have all my little papers and stuff here, so that's awesome. I don't have a ton of papers. You don't need a ton of papers, because the nice thing about how we bind the journal with the rubber bands, whether you use hair bands or rubber bands, you can mix and move the papers whenever you want. It's not like they're going to be sewn in and stuck in a place. So. so what I like to do is start with your book and see kind of what size paper you need. Like I said, I tend to like the 6x9 size books just because I can take an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and fold it in half. It's going to fit great. So what we're going to do in this step is kind of fold these in half and trim them down as necessary. You can use a paper cutter, you can rip them, whatever you like to do. I like to have my papers in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. Um, but I'm just going to start kind of folding these all in half. 
You want like a nice clean fold. I have one of those really fancy official book binding bone folders that you would use to make your nice creases. But I also, of course, don't have it with me at my desk, so not gonna worry about it. This one I think I'm gonna have to cut down a little bit. It might be too big. I don't know, it fits cool. If you do have ones that are too long, you can always fold them like in threes too, and that is a cool way to get different pockets and kind of like pull out sections. I'm just gonna kind of fold these all in half, not really worry too much about it being perfect. You can fold them, you know. You don't have to fold them exactly in half. This one I did a three quarter. Some of the papers are thin. Some of them are thick. I like having a lot of variety. These are some old Shakespeare book pages. That's kind of neat. And I think in this book I'm going to have three signatures total. So let's see here. I think I only need three of those. Marbled paper. And it doesn't really matter what direction you fold it in. You can fold it, you know, any which way, especially when you're using scrap paper like this, where it's just not something you're gonna use a whole lot. have like a lot of painted papers, you don't have a lot of scrap paper or doodle papers, you can always just use like any kind of paper really. Cardstock, scrapbook paper, um, you can get paper pretty much anywhere. I just like to kind of use up what I already have. And then too, when you go to like make art in your book or you start doing some collage or painting, you have like all these nice layers. You're not staring at a blank page, so it's a little less intimidating. Although this one is a blank page. I personally am just happy to finally be using up a lot of this stuff. I'm not sure what I was doing with this. I think I was trying some kind of drawing technique. I don't really remember. I don't know what this is. I wrote the chicken right there. <laughs> Who knows what was going on in my mind that day. I think that was one of those days where I just had a pen and a marker and some paper in bed. Alright, and then, you know, exciting stuff like math problems. Right. I have that greeting card, that to-do list here. My daughter's old homework papers. There we go, we folded all of our paper up. So now we're ready to start making the signatures. So if you're new to bookbinding, you might be wondering what the heck is a signature. And a signature is basically 
a section of pages. That's the easiest way to remember it. And when we put our papers in here, um, we're gonna probably do, I think I'm gonna do three signatures. So I'm just gonna take at random, totally at random, different pages and I'm gonna put them inside of each other. Like this. And it's up to you how many pages you want in a signature. I have found that, you know, somewhere around 10 is usually like a good magic number. Because if you go over too much, then it gets kind of hard to manage. I also kind of like to layer like small papers with big papers. But the nice thing again, like I said with this journal, we can change where the pages are at any time. Nothing is locked into place. Um, unless you decide later to glue it, actually physically glue it down. So that's a nice thing about that. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to use my marbled paper here. So there's one signature. And basically I just took all of our folded sheets of paper and put them in a pile. So that's one. Let's make the next one. I'm going to start the next one with this card. Put that there. Get some homework. Get some cardstock in there. Music page, I'll put that there. Put that in there. Let me do one more. Maybe two more. signature number two and then let's put these together here crazy looking drawing right there. And this is one that I didn't fold in half, so that's something to think about. If you didn't fold them in half, make sure you actually are lining up the folds together. If you have pages that have writing and stuff and you want it to make sure make sure it's the right direction that you can read it. Alright, so that is our last section. And basically you just want to make sure they're balanced. There's no specific number of pages. Like this one feels a little bit light to me. So I might take a page out of here and stick it in this one just to kind of balance them out a little bit better. Put 
So we have one, two, three signatures. So next step is we're gonna actually put them inside our book. So for this step, you're going to need some type of elastic band. So these are file folder bands. They're seven inch rubber bands, synthetic rubber bands, because they're latex free. Um, these will fit almost any book and they have like a lot of nice stretch to them. So that's one option. They come in all kinds of colors too, which is nice. So you could use that. Another option that I really like are these elastic hair bands. These are, I think, nine inches wide. Um, so they don't fit on every book. Like if you have a shorter book, it may be too long and you're not gonna get enough stretch. I do recommend buying a name brand. Do not buy the ones at the dollar store. I mean, they work, but they lose their stretch really easily. Um, so I tend to like the rug. This is, I think, a dollar store one. See how it just kind of, that's too much stretch. You don't want that much stretch. It's not gonna hold everything in place. These ones don't stretch that much. So. I think I'm going to use these. It's up to you, a matter of personal preference. Um, either one works. Just make sure you get the very thin ones. I think these are about an eighth of an inch. Doesn't say. They're no more than a quarter an inch. I know that. So, And you can test. When you put them on your book, you want just a little bit of give. You don't want it to be flopping around. If this is flopping around, it's going to be too loose. And you'll need to use something like these instead. You can also use um, yarn or thread or twine or ribbon. Um, it's really up to you. You would just take a piece of yarn and just tie it around. So I'm going to put these on and we're just going to put them around the spine. Just slide them on there. And again, it depends on the thickness of your book. You may need five signatures, or you may want four, or you may, if it's a real thin book, may only have two or only one. So just a matter of personal preference and the kind of book you're making. And then we're just gonna slide these in here. So I'm gonna pick this up, slide this in. There's one. Now I'll slide this one in. Two. Oh. I'm not the most coordinated person to be demonstrating this probably, but let's see. That is part of the reason why I made up this journal binding method though, is because sewing Journal binding is even more difficult for me. There we go. Does it all fit? It all fits. How exciting. Now, if you notice, and then sometimes after you do that, you have to kind of adjust it so it's back around the spine. If you notice that your pages are too loose in here, just add more paper in each signature. Um, but what I really love about these journals is like, say I'm like, oh, why did I put this here? I don't want this here. I can just pull that out. My journal is still intact. I'm like, I really want this right here. Stick it in there. That is what I love about these journals because it's so versatile. Um, it's just awesome. Now, if this bothers you or this is kind of flopping right here, something you could do is take like a sheet of paper, like, that's not a good example. A sheet of paper like this and wrap it around and you could actually glue it so that this is more, more like a book. You would have your end papers. But this doesn't bother me. You could also tape this in if you wanted to make this a little more permanent. 
Or you could even just take this sheet right here and glue it in. Really just a matter of personal preference, but I am happy with it just the way it is. And it's super easy, super fun, super accessible. Like you're just using whatever random papers you have. Um, so even if you're not an artist, like you could just use like copy paper or printouts or anything you have really. And I just, I love these journals. They're so fun to make. So that is a detailed step-by-step -step instruction on how to make a junky art journal with my elusive no so perfect binding method. And in an upcoming video, I will start giving you some ideas on what we will actually do with this journal because a lot of people ask me that all the time. Well, like once you make it, what do you put in it? So that is be the topic for our next video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.